This show talks about books that feature mental health topics. There are many books that include this topic, and my hope is that more and more people know about them because they help to decrease the stigma and help people not feel so alone in their struggle. I am your host, Robin Tomanaha. Joining me on this episode is my guest, Ernesto Cisneros. Ernesto is a proud parent, proud teacher, and proud author. Hi, Ernesto. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. Yeah. Super, super excited. So before we get started, um, so I read your book and I love it. It It's great. For the listeners and like the viewers, could you give like kind of like a brief um, this description of, of the book or like what it's about? Yeah. So uh, the book is, is about a 12 year old boy named uh, Efren Nava and his life is turned upside down when his mom is deported and he's left to fend for himself and for his little brother and sister. And pretty much you take on all the responsibilities of, you know, of the mom. Um, and while the dad takes in a second job and the hope is that she'll be able to return. So that's yeah. the yeah. But, uh, yeah. And something I like to always start with is um, I like showing the cover. You know, they say never judge a book by its cover. And, and you know, I'm, I'm fine with it um, because sometimes I like to point out how I wanted to portray to write a book that showed how kids, how we our perception of children sometimes. And then just to remind people that sometimes if we dig deep inside, we find out that there's a lot more going on in their lives. And so that's pretty much what this book is. It's the look of an average Latino child from Santa Ana. And then we just get to go into his home and, and kind of learn more about him. Yeah. The cover is amazing. As far as like the other things on the cover too, is there anything else on there that like, because I even I noticed like there's like the city and all that. Like, is there something related to that as well? or? There is. If you were to actually Google um, Field Pico Elementary, that's what the, that's the photograph they used to base the the image the cover on, and that's where I began teaching. And uh, and then you can't see because of the Buddha Belpri Award, but there's a, a little uh, for rent sign behind there, and it's actually from the apartment complex across the street from there. And and yes, and uh, and so when I went over, I remember the little shoes over here. There there were actually there too, and. Um, yeah, I wanted to pretty much just kind of grab a little bit of a chunk of the world and put it in the book. And Highland Street actually is on there. You can actually, the description of the homes, the trees, you can actually kind of Google everything, do a little a little walk for yourself and, and see the, where I friend grew up in. So yes, I'm, I was just honored and blown away that they put so much of uh, the neighborhood in, in there. It was amazing. That is amazing. And that also goes to show, because like, I love, you know, book covers. And whenever I see uh, different illustrations, I'm like, well, there might, maybe there's some meaning in here, you know, because like symbolism even, you know, but I think for yours, it sounds like it's very much like what is around too. Like what you saw, that's so neat. Mm -hmm. That's so neat. And I love that they showcase this little neighborhood because back when I used to work there, if you took a one and a half mile radius of the school, it was the third most densest, densely populated area with children in the nation um, and i'm not sure if that stat still holds but that's the, the stat they had before um and so it was honestly it was like it's where i began teaching and it's where my heart will always be and i grew up in you know in the neighborhood too so it's it's, it's just kind of nice to see it uh featured this way so it's been a gift yeah and now after this i'm gonna go do a drive because i'm <laughs> local now i want to go and like see like oh there's the there's the part of the book, you know, too. So that's really, really cool. Um, and then, you know, they even asked me, they, they had me send in pictures of my son, too, uh, to give him, uh, you know, uh, ideas of what the, the the boy on the cover would look like. And um, again, I'm just really blessed because I know as a debut author, how many people are, you know, are, 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 are you know, I mean, we don't have much say in it. And it's just been amazing so far. So. Yeah, that's great that they really collaborated with you and that there's so much meaning on the book cover, too, and the connection. Like, that's really neat. That's really neat. Yeah. Um, what led what led to the creation of the book? So I was supposed to be writing a book because I was having trouble publishing my, my work. Uh, it had been 14 years, and I had pretty much just kind of you know, it, my career wasn't going anywhere, um, or at least not where I wanted it to be. And so in my classroom, we're always writing. 
and uh, we do short stories. And I decided, okay, I'm going to write a short story. And you know what? I'm hearing some really bad. This was back in 2016 during the elections. And I was hearing some really negative things being said. And um, so I said, you know what? I'm going to write something that's kind of uh, affirming to the, the culture and to the kids. I want to see them see themselves in a positive light for a change. And um, I started writing the book. And I kept hearing more and more things in the media. And it just kept, kind of kept fueling me a little bit more. Um, and I wasn't, I had the community. I knew exactly what the world was going to be like, but I didn't have a plot yet when I was writing it. I, my plot's usually the last thing that comes, believe it or not. I always, it's like I create the characters and then they just do their own thing. And um, yeah, and so that that's happening. I'm watching all the horrible things being said. And then uh, right after the elections, I had one of my students come up to me and he, I had three of them total. But I remember one in particular because um, he just left me so dumbfounded and I didn't really know what to say to him. But he told me that the weekend prior uh, to that week when he was there, his dad had been taken away. So ICE went over to his apartment and arrested him and took him away. And here he was still doing his homework, still being you know wonderful uh, kid in the class. And, uh, and I didn't really know what to say to him to make him feel better. And so that's kind of where Ephraim was born. And um, I wanted to offer like a friend to help, you know, encourage him to navigate through these times in his life. And, uh, and I was writing the book. I'm like, okay, I need the kids to leave with something special. Uh, if this is going on in their lives, they have to have some kind of advice, something to, to help them. And so six months later, the book was done. And then I, I, my students loved it, the ones that we were editing with, because we had like a little race. Sometimes in the week, over the weekends, they'll be like, Mr. C, I wrote six pages. How many pages did you write? <laughs> and it, it was pretty, pretty cool. And um, anyways, they, they were really liking the, the work. And they said, OK, th this is really, really good. You got to publish it. And I'm like, publish it? I wasn't even thinking about that, because deep inside, I had kind of given up. And I was just thinking, well, I'm just going to practice my or the craft. I'm going to hone my craft for a, a couple more years and maybe give it another shot. Um, so I wasn't going to maybe, I wasn't thinking maybe give up completely, but for the time being, I had. And so I called my agent and I'm like, I am so sorry. I was supposed to be working on something you might be able to sell. And instead, I preoccupied myself with the story about a, an immigrant family. I know that there's no way on, on earth that you're ever going to be able to sell you know, a Latino a book like this. Um, I thought it was a nice, quiet little story, but I didn't think anybody would have any interest. And so um, she read it, fell in love with it, and then we finally submitted it. And two weeks later, we had an, an offer from HarperCollins. So, right? It's like one of the largest publishers in the world. And yeah, and it just, yeah, after 14 years, it just kind of magically happened. So it was, it, it's been very surreal. Yeah. That is so interesting. It's interesting because it sounds like too, like in a way it kind of unfolded a little organically for mm -hmm. you, part of it, and even up to the process of like the publishing. And, you know, I am so glad that, you know, it got published. I think there's so much power in your book for like your students that, you know, were there and know you and, you know, know the story. But as far as for everyone else, you know, and expanding it to a wider audience where this is like, an, this is their experience. And I think, that's also why, like, in general, like, I've kind of become more and more of a book lover, like, later in life is because, you know, now there are these books out that resonate, you know, with the reader and of different age groups. And there is so much power in this reading a story and feeling seen, you know, like, they're not seeing you, but you're like, you're feeling seen because you connect with the character and like, some piece of them or parts of them that um, they're struggling with or certain things that they're experiencing in life. Yes, and you feel valued and you feel like your your experiences are valuable too because you're seeing them on, on the page. Uh, I, I could not agree with you anymore that that's, yeah, I, so true. Oh my goodness. And I'm so, thank you for sharing, you know, the story too of, um, you know, of your student too and Oh my gosh, like, I, you know, I can't even imagine, you know, and, and during the time, like, especially during the election, and like, that was brought up a lot, like color, and then like, also, um, this message that you're like, lesser, 
like you're lesser than others, you know, be because of because of color too. That was such like a huge piece of it. Yes, and um, initially I was thinking that uh, the name of the book was going to be Soped Boy because it's play on words on Superboy um, from his mom making sopes that were amazing. And um, but I, I, as the we finally finished with the, well, I finished with the book. Um, it became clear there was a, a huge divide, not just across the nation, but even in the schools and the community and the media. Oh my goodness, in politics, um, it was everywhere. Um, and so the students, I, I just, I really got a sense that they didn't feel safe uh, in 2016. They came to school really worried. Uh, some of them are from mixed status families. Um, and so, you know, can you imagine going home or being at school and knowing that your mom's going to be going to the supermarket or your mom's going to be going to work and just having that in the back of your mind thinking, is this the day I come home and my parents not there anymore? Uh, I mean, it's it's just, and having that every single day of your life, I, I, honestly, it, I'm so impressed by my students sometimes. I mean, the, the things that they do as an adult, if I'm having a bad day, I can call in sick and have a substitute, you know, do my lessons for me and just kind of recoup. But as a student, we really don't afford them that luxury sometimes. Uh, so, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're amazing. They're, they really are. And to, and to carry that, you know, I think, those of us that are, you know, work with kids are like really familiar with like kiddos, you know, we know that like there are is a lot going on on the inside, like internal, like, you know, emotionally, mentally, um, you know, what they're carrying. I know like in, in your book too, there's a lot of that juggling different things and, you know, trying to keep, you know, going and um, like from the outsider, they may not know, you know, or see or even kind of stop and pause and be like, I wonder, you know, I wonder what this kiddo's experience is like right now, given, you know, what's going on, you know, in the country. You know, and I think if more and more people do those check-ins or are very like, you know, think being mindful and thinking about that, I think it would um, be so helpful, you know, for them, because you're right. There's just like that. I'm still going to have to be going to school while there's this like doom of like, or fear of like, you know, if my parent goes out, like, will they be coming back, you know? And and that's a lot, like, that's a lot for anyone, and that's a lot for adult, but that is a lot for a kid, too. And that's, like, your your parent or, like, your grandparent or other family members, you know, in general. Like, that is so much. It is. And then add the pandemic on top of that. And, you know, all the, the I mean, all the stresses that we have. Uh, so many kids right now in school are having uh, issues. Uh, they're having issues with anxiety. And it's not just the students, the teachers, too. I know I am. I mean, it, it's, you know, there's days that, I have to be really aware of it and be like, okay, I'm, I'm not having a good day. Let me, what can I do to help myself? But being older, I have the experience to be able to help myself. I know the things that, that do help me. Uh, so sometimes it's, you know, it's tough because children don't always have that. Yeah, as we're older, we kind of like have some of the tools, you know, and kind of know like what to pull out when we need it. But yeah, with the kiddos, it's kind of, it's, it's harder, you know. Yeah. When your when your book came out, like when it was published and stuff, like for your students, was there any particular like reaction then you when you became to like a published author as well, and like you have now like this book out? Well, here, here's the thing: once the book, the class that actually helped me to write the book, you know, my editors, <laughs> they uh, it took two years for the book to come out. Mm. They had already graduated, and then the book came out during, and then I was supposed to have like this big old reunion. So I, I reached out to the high schools and I was supposed to have this, this book launch and that didn't happen. Everything got canceled. But pandemic. Yes. But I ended up um, I was kind of at first I was I was devastated. Um, I mean, I, I was a debut author. Nobody had ever heard of me or my book. And I was just thinking I'm probably going to sell 15, 20 copies. And, you know, and I was OK with that. I, I really was. After a while, I'm like, you know what? They got published and that was your dream. And next time that you're in the classroom and you're doing writer's workshops with the students, they're going to see that behind you and be like, ah, oh, okay, I'm going to listen to that guy. You know, he has a book that's been published. And so I came to terms with it and I was fine. And then I ended up having my book launch and it was a virtual one. I did it on YouTube. And, um, and I was thinking I'm going to have like 
four people. I think it's going to be my mom, my dad, maybe one of my siblings is probably going to, if that. <laughs> so I, I go live and it has a pretty good number of views now. But um, at the time, I think it was about like 90 views. And when I looked over at the sides, it was amazing because guess who showed up? All of the students who, yeah. So I'm going to get emotional. So I'm going to have a little sip here. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah, they were just giving me comments on there and uh, that I was using. They left me see the comments live, as, you know, they put them on there. And so you get to see Mr. C, we're so proud of you and, and all sorts of really nice comments. And um, so that was, that was my little celebration with them. It, it was really nice. Yeah. Late earlier, about two months earlier, one of my former students that was in that same class, she did, um, she's the editor at her school and she did an article on me too. Uh, for my next book. So that was really cool too. You know, so it's, I'm still in touch with them. That's wonderful. Wow. Wow. That's really cool too. That's really, really cool. Um, for you too, as you were, and I always ask this to authors where there's like kind of, um, like there is like the connection, like some sort of personal connection with the story that they, that they wrote. For you, like, what was it like writing this, you know, story, this very, very important story, you know, and then also seeing some of these kiddos, you know, that had experienced something similar, right, or exactly that. Like, what was that like for you? It was like, just that writing process, was it like cathartic or like what, what just was it like for you, you know? Uh, yes, at times. Other times it was really emotional. I pretty much took my mom as is and I put her in the book. And everything in the beginning of the book, of the way she used to make, you know, miracles in the kitchen for us when there was no food. I mean, we would look, we'd open the fridge and there's nothing in there for us to eat. And then my mom would open the door after us and say, hold on, give me five, ten minutes. And then we would have, you know, amazing food. And one of them was a sopes, which is just masa, beans, and cheese. And so my mom made it a point. She always had beans in the house. And she could make uh, like ten different things with just beans uh you know and and each one just seemed a little special to us and we never thought of it as being like you know this is all we had we always thought of it like this is a luxury item like oh my gosh my mom's making this what a treat for us today and so she kind of kept us in the dark uh, about a lot of things so little thin details like that were in the book max and mia are my nephew they're not actually twins in real life but they grew up together so they might as well have been i took some of their personality personalities together the dad uh opening scene where the boy tries to get up early so he can watch his dad before he goes to work true story i'd get up my dad used to work at a doing landscaping and sometimes i'd get up at five in the morning he'd be gone and i'm like you know what i'm gonna surprise him i'm just gonna surprise him I get up at 4 30 and he was gone and I'm like, man, how early does this kid get up and go? I, I, I can't surprise him. And so little details like that where, you know, he was like a soap ed man too. I, I just put everything that I knew that I grew up with, all my experiences, and I just put them in the book. So the book means a lot to me. Um, it's really personal. But also scenes where you have to, like, have the mom taken away. Those are really hard for me to write because, you know, I was channeling a lot of things from, from when I was growing up. We lived in we lived in a in a really tough neighborhood, and uh, my mom would sometimes get home at two in the morning from work. She worked in a factory, and I didn't trust her. You know, having we had a gate. Fortunately, it kept us you know safe. Uh, but she had to get out of the car, open the gate, go inside, and then manually open the garage, put the car inside. And I was always kind of just nervous for her. You know, it wasn't the best neighborhood, so I, I used to stay up and wait for her. And she would yell at me and be like, no, you have school tomorrow. You can't be waiting for me. It's two in the morning. What are you thinking? And I would still stay up. And so all those little details are just things that, that made it to the book. They just, there were some things I had to maneuver a little bit, to, you know, to accommodate the storyline. But yeah, everything in there is pretty much just my life growing up. So, so it, it's a very important book to me. Yeah, that's really neat. And that, that you pull different experiences. And I always find it like, like when I read, you know, like the middle grade or like the books for like kiddos, like the experience too of that, like that story of seeing it through the child's eyes, that is, I always find really, really interesting. Yeah. It is because I, I, I was thinking about this just the other day. 
when we were kids, we we saw the world a different way, and we saw ourselves another way, a different way. Like we didn't re realize the beauty and how awesome we were at the moment until we get older, and then you look back and you see photos of yourself, and you're like, oh my gosh, you were such a nice person. And y'all, you were so worried, you know, because you didn't have that many friends. But you had amazing, really, like, you know, friends that were like siblings. So you were better off that way. But we didn't see those things before. The way we looked, I used to think that it's like, well, why am I so pudgy around the waist? My friends aren't. And it's like, no, you were amazing looking. But, you know, we, we don't always see that. So sometimes when you go back and you reflect, it's, it's just amazing to see how awesome we all were, right? And And I almost feel like, I wish authors would celebrate that a little bit more and let kids and be, you know, let the kids see that you are awesome. Um, and that, that's something that I, I was trying to actually channel on the second book because, um, you know, like um, with that friend, I wanted to, to tackle a little bit of the sense of disentitlement that I felt growing up. And the new one, I wanted to just tackle more of the self doubt and they're very similar to each other, but they're, they're caused by different things. Interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah. Could you, I don't know if you can, but like the second book, could you like say anything about oh, yeah. that? So this is, this is a uh, falling short. It's going to be coming out in March. Mm -hmm. This is, this is Isaac. Uh, oops, over here, named after my son. And this is Marco named after my nephew. And this actually is what Marco looked well. Marco has since grown up a bit more, so he doesn't look exactly like this anymore. But at the time, you know, this is again, they they afford me these these uh, these they're not luxuries, just these amazing benefits, a gift that they you know they they ask for my insight about the covers, which is amazing. I mean, that's just huge. So you know, Collins has been amazing, and um, Jay Ben, uh, I hope I'm saying her last name B E N D T. Uh, Jay is amazing with the covers. And so this is Marco over here. And Marco does not have a very good um, relationship with his father. And he feels that if he were to make the school basket, his father was a jock. And he loves video games and reading and comic books. And he's an, you know, more of an intellectual. And he's under the impression that if he were to make the school basketball team, he would be able to connect with his dad and finally have the relationship he's always wanted. Isaac, on the other hand, is not very good academically but he's gifted on the basketball court and his parents are going through a divorce. And he feels that if he were to be a little bit more, if he got his grades up, that his parents wouldn't be fighting over him so much, wouldn't be fighting so much. And so he thinks he can fix the marriage and, uh, and keep them together. So they're, they're best friends. They live right next to each other and they've known each other since kinder. And they're going to try and pretty much become uh, different versions of each other uh, in order to, uh, you know, to kind of uh, get the families that they want. So it's, and it's a little bit lighthearted, but it also has a lot of heart like different too. Yeah, I definitely see that, especially with that divorce piece too, like the kiddos feeling like there's something they could do, you know, as well. Like that's. Yeah. yeah. Growing up, a lot of my friends, we all, a lot of us struggled with the relationships with their dads. And a lot of it was because they had pretty bad relationships with their fathers uh, some of it comes, stems from the fact that the fathers traditionally in the Latino households, they're always working. So you don't see them. And then they come home and they're like physically beat up. Uh, and so it's hard to, you know, find the time to, to you know, go take your son to go play uh, sports and things like that. Um, and so I just wanted to, and then again, it was something that a lot of my friends, we all had in common and I wanted to address it a little bit. That and toxic masculinity, um, toxic masculinity, uh just self-doubt uh and just write a book that again celebrated how awesome kids are and uh and remind them to that they're they're amazing the way they are i'm really excited for that book oh, i'm like you. super excited last question i have since since the release you know publish uh publication of you know Ephraim divided since then have you received any like interesting surprising or shocking like fan mail email or like responses from anyone i have i have and i was hoping some of these would be within reach 
uh, and they are not within reach. But I have received so many like kid letters uh, and I've kept all of them. I've tried to respond to everybody and it just breaks my heart when they, they're telling me, oh, your story is just like mine. Uh, you know, I feel like I got Bob's Efren. Uh, my mom is so bad too. Um, oh my goodness. So they, I mean, honestly, they just make me cry every time I get something like that. So they're, they're amazing. Uh, they go to my website too and they ask me questions sometimes the students. It's amazing how um, socially, not socially, but uh, how savvy they are, tech savvy. And so on Instagram, I'll get questions from students and they're just like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then, oh, they'll be asking me sometimes, Mr. C, I'm doing a book report on an author. Could you help me? <laughs> it's just kind of funny sometimes too. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, the, those are my favorite things when I get when I get to interact with the kids. Like one of one time, I actually got to do a, a virtual visit with the school, uh, Pio Pico, the one that I had mentioned before. And so the fact that those kids, you know, their school is on the cover, and when they go to the playground, that's the one I, I described in the book, and they can actually, you know, go home and yeah, they're living in the book. They're they're there. So that that's that's always been a, a nice treat. Hopefully, it's I can get to in person someday. That's really cool. That must be so exciting for them too. Like when you respond back on social media. Like they probably get so excited about that. Like, like fan, you know, like they're like huge fans or they just get super excited. Like, oh my gosh, the author responded into like that you, that you do that. Like you engage with them and you converse with them. Like that's so meaningful. Well, I remember we, in my classroom, we used to back, well, I'm going to date myself, but back in the day when we used to write fan letters to our authors and then we would always try and see uh, who would answer back. And some of the students would get, you know, generic letters and then other authors would be super amazing. Um, and um, uh, Lewis Lowry, for example, one of my students read uh, The Giver and they wanted to write a fan letter to her. And I remember it was a boy and I told him, you know, that's a pretty, um, that's a pretty famous author. She's, I'm not sure she's going to be able to write back to you because, you know, sometimes the, the lesser known ones were the ones that usually responded back. And um, a few months later, he receives a package from her. Not only did she send him a personalized letter, she sent him a couple of books too. And I was just thinking, oh my gosh, that is amazing. It says so much about her, who she is. And so I just remembered, I'm like, okay, that's 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 exactly the person I want to be someday. If I ever do publish a book, I'm going to remember that. And just the way that this, how excited the boy was to receive a letter back from her was, his face just lit up. So I, I will always try to do that. Yeah. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Before we wrap up, is there anything um I didn't bring up that you wanted to mention or talk about? Well, you know what? I did I did bring, use the term disentitlement, and sometimes uh, people want me to define it a little bit, um, only because right now I'm starting to see it again. Um, as I watch, you know, I try not to listen too much to the media, but I also have to keep myself informed. And uh, this entitlement to me has always, and I'm, I'm not even sure if it's a real word or not. I keep using it as, as if it is. So I'm just going to assume that it is at this point. It's the opposite of entitlement. And I always just kind of grew up feeling like I wasn't entitled to the same things that everybody else was. Um, and it goes back from right now, if we look at everything that's happening, all the books being pulled. Um, it's like we're finally starting to see books written about people of color. And we're starting to see ourselves in there. We're being celebrated. And now the books are being taken away. And so I just feel like, wow, we're not even afforded these rights too. And so I always had that sense of being less than. And so, you know, that's another reason why Efren Divided was born because I wanted to celebrate these things. And my books will always be doing this. I've already determined that my book, that's something I will do in every single one of my books to just celebrate, you know, diversity. And so just kind of seeing everything, I feel like there's a, a there's there's more of a need even, uh, more more now. And I thought that after the elections were done, I'm like, OK, life is going to go back to normal. You know, things are going to get better. But um, everything has been so polarized and politic politic. I can't say the word turn politically politicized. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel like I want I think we the kids need more books right now to, to they see themselves in there. And so that when they hear things from the media, they're not going to buy into those things. Because I know that social media has a huge influence on children. And I believe truly that literature can do the same. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, the whole books being 
band take you know and when you're right they are BIPOC authors and it's I feel so frustrated um about that kind of going back earlier to what you know that being seen you know and like what you said like being validated you know that's so important and and really true representation of stories and people's experiences you know the your book and others you know other authors that write books you know that is so meaningful and so important because there's sometimes some mis you know misconceptions and who best you know to put out these books than the authors you know who are experiencing that have or that they are that culture you know like that's where like the truth that's like powerful you know those those are the stories to be to be told and read and and also for the reader so um just like with my podcast so they don't feel so alone you know and you know what I like also when I encounter books like um well Kelly Yang who's also from Anaheim uh, her books I last time I spoke with her I, I was mentioning how you can take our parents and and like and change them up like if you put my my parents in her book and her parents in my book they would fit in beautifully because there's so many similarities and I love when kids can re read a book that's from a you know somebody from a different background and be like oh my gosh you know we do that too and so you see that we're more alike than we are different uh, and i think it's a lot more difficult to dislike people when you know them well and so i think diverse books we all open up our garage doors uh and we let people into our homes and they get to experience what you know an authentic uh person looks a family looks like so yeah exactly yeah i love kelly Young's books too mm -hmm. yeah yeah so your book, where could people purchase your book? I think it's ev it's literally everywhere. I believe I usually ask this question, but I know for yours, it's actually like anywhere you could purchase books, I believe. I am truly blessed. I really, really am. And again, I went from thinking I might sell 20 copies to, to having my book. Yeah, you can purchase it pretty much anywhere. Uh, again, it's just, you know, it, it, it goes beyond anything I could have ever dreamt. And if um if the viewers or listeners want to find out more about you, um, where could they go? Is there like a website or like social media handle for you? Oh my goodness! So everything is actually linked on my website, just ErnestoCisneros.com. Um, I am on Instagram, Cisne underscore rights, and on Twitter. Oh my goodness! What is my Twitter handle? Um, <laughs> I can tell you right now about five seconds and my Twitter handle is at author underscore Cisneros. Got it. Okay. So what I will do is I'll put that all in the show notes for this episode. Um, and then on the books between sessions.com website where I'll have our, our episode on um, this video. So then they could just click, click the links to and like easily just go to your website and in your Twitter and all that. Okay. And if there are any teachers watching, if you go to my website, there's pages and pages of lessons uh, for that go with, along with the book. So you know you don't have to reinvent. There's quizzes, there's comprehension things, there's breakout boxes, there's just about anything you could want to go along with the book. You'll find it uh, linked on my website. Oh, that's great. That's really neat. Oh, I'm a teacher, so yeah, <laughs> so <helpful. laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of the things for other teachers. That's the one the amazing thing about teachers. We all share our, our things, uh, and so on. Insta, you know, Instagram and Twitter, people would create lessons and they would share them with me. And I, I, I make sure I give everybody credit, so you'll see whose lessons. They, you know, a lot of them are a few are mine, and some of them are friends of mine, and others are just teachers I've, I've you know, we have come across and met. Great. Well, thanks again for being a guest. It was a pleasure having you on, and. Like I said, I'm super excited for your next book. So I'll definitely be reading that coming soon. So thank you so much. You know, I'm a big fan of, of all you do. And uh, and thank you so much for, for inviting me here today. Definitely.